recently I got a little do-it-yourself kit from my supplier Pollen Electronics. It is a Herzklopfen do-it-yourself kit which resembles some kind of beating heart. That is quite cheesy, but I guess for Valentine's Day that is okay. Let's take a look what we have inside. We have some LEDs, some resistors, two capacitors, a whole bunch of transistors which are BC557, that is also 557, a 547 and another 547. So that makes two 557 and one 547 a little battery holder and a safety pin. What do we need the safety pin for? Well, let's take a look at the printed circuit board. Here we have two solder pads where we can attach the safety pin to mount this little circuit board onto our chest, for example. Oh, by the way, there is the instructions manual. Well, they did not print the part values onto the printed circuit board, so we have to take a look inside. What is this? Safety instructions. We don't need those. Ah, there are the part informations. I don't know if you can see this in at the camera, but I hope you can. I already saw that we have a circuit diagram. Oh, what is that? Oh, that is nice. They tell you exactly how to identify each part. You can see the colors of the resistors. They tell you how to mount the capacitors, how to mount the transistors, how to identify the LEDs. And that is quite nice. Another safety instructions. We don't need those. And there is the circuit diagram which is quite easy to understand. If you take a look at it, it's quite a simple standard circuit. The LEDs are divided into two groups, which are driven by T3 and T4. T1 and T2 are connected to form some kind of blinking circuitry. And of course you can control the blinking frequency while trimming TR1. So let's take a look how this works out. Let us begin! I guess I place this right here so I can take a look into it. Usually you start with the smallest pieces. I guess I start with the 150 ohms resistors. This is R8 to R19. Oh, and let's get a little helping tool to hand. Where is it? Oh, there it is. This is actually just a piece of plastic which helps you form the leads of the parts into the right shape to fit into the holes of the printed circuit board. Let's take a look if that fits. No, it doesn't. So let's try it again. Take a look if this fits. Why isn't it? Ah, there was some dirt in the hole. Yeah, that works out. What was it? R8 to R19.
don't drop anything, we need all that. So, let's begin. 8, this is 9. R10. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, nineteen. <laughs> why are uh, why is number nineteen here? Oh, they go backwards. It's quite symmetrical build. Sixteen, fifteen, and number fourteen. So let's begin soldering them. If it sits on the backs of the resistors, uh, you just have to press down a little bit to hold them in place. Otherwise, I maybe would just solder one side, um, move them around, and solder the other side to keep them perfectly straight. But I guess this should work out perfectly. So, we are done. It's time for some nipping action. Must be terrible exciting watching me doing this. But okay, we have to start with something. So, they are all sitting nice and flush to the surface. Ah, okay, maybe I should have placed all the tolerance rings in one direction. But, oh, come on, we're not in some kind of exam right now. So, never mind. Here we have R3, which is 68k. At least, I hope it is. But I guess Pollin will know which resistor values they put into there. Here we have, uh, looks like red, 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 
which is 2.2k. Oh, and by the way, if I sometimes measure a resistor, even though the values seem to be quite obvious, I have a dyschromatopsia. So that shall be R1, R5 and R6. Here we have R6. Where's R1? Where is... Ah, there it is. There is R1. So those should be 30, 33 kilo ohms. Orange, orange, orange. That is correct. Boop. Ah, let go. There should be only three left. Where's the third one? Um. Oh, there it is. It's all. Uh, it's actually quite a nice printed circuit board with this little hearts on the silk screen. But actually I would have preferred a red silk screen instead of a white one. But on the other hand, I guess you wouldn't be able to see the hearts on the front side when it is a red silk screen. So we have two kinds of transistors. Did I got a pair? Uh, no, I didn't. I just got... So BC547 are 1 and 2. What is that? The pin pitch is quite wrong. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but something went wrong designing this. But never mind. We can get this to fit. Number one. Is that the other one? Yes, it is. And number two. So those should be the other two. Oh wait, I should place it at the right orientation. I'm gonna solder the middle pin first so I can correct the position of the transistors afterwards. I'm 
going to cut the remaining legs at first, which gives a nicer, cleaner solder joint. isn't it taking the solder? Oh, okay, I see. It is on a ground plane. Maybe you can see it on camera. It is quite a beefy ground plane on the outside pin, which pulls the heat away from the solder joint. So here we have the battery holder. it's nearly the same height. That is quite nice. It's sitting nice and flush. So let's take the variable resistor. Oh my god, the holes are fitting. I guess everyone involved in electronics have noticed this often enough that those trimmers have quite beefy legs which doesn't fit into standard hole sizes. But those fit quite well. So here we have two capacitors. Okay, they want them to lay down. Yes, sure, we can do that. Maybe I should tack them down with some hot snot. Yeah, I guess I will do this. Wait a moment, I'm getting the glue gun. actually quite like using this Bosch glue pen, but I'm not that convinced of its quality, because I have this now for around three months, and it is already the second one. The first one broke down just a few weeks after purchase. It didn't heat anymore, so this is quite annoying, I guess. Hopefully this one will last longer. So let's place them at about the same height, which would be like this. No, well, I guess that is okay. Number one. Ah, that was hot. 
by the way. Those are 63 volt caps. I don't think that those little CR2032 batteries are capable of getting anywhere near 63 volts. They are really generous here. Oh, maybe they just had too much of them laying in the storage because they could not sell them or whatever. Okay, that is fixed. So let's go over to a happy LED soldering action. If you don't like the red LEDs, I'm sure you can just swap them to use, for example, yellow ones. Maybe you should calculate if you need another resistor, because other LEDs have another forward voltage. But just guessing, this should work out fine. Let's take a look how the LEDs should be placed into there. Actually, most of the time you can take a look inside the case of the LED. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. Uh, yeah. Maybe like this. You can see one part of the LED has a bigger, chunkier piece of metal inside. This is usually the negative pole, the cathode, while the other one is the anode. But be careful, I already had two or three LEDs which didn't use this polarity. Otherwise, you sure you can look at the length of the leads of the LED. The shorter one is usually the negative one and also there's a notch on the side of the LED. This is also the negative side. If you're not sure, just use a multimeter. Those holes are drilled perfectly fine. The LEDs have little notches at the top part. Maybe you can see this. They kind of get stuck in there so they won't fall out if you turn it around. So this is quite nice for soldering them. So you don't have to hold all of those LEDs at once. You can just stick them in and slop it around. Here I'm going to solder one side again to have a look at the correct alignment of the LEDs afterwards. This was a bit too much solder. Oh well, I'm going to clean this afterwards. Mm, they are fitting quite nice. I am astonished. 
don't have to move them around. I guess I was a bit over enthusiastic. This one isn't quite straight. I guess I have to fix this. Truth is coming. Oh, my God, I accidentally nipped two wires at once. What am I for bad guy? Okay, let's get a battery. I'm not quite sure if this still has some charge. Not really charge at all. How do I get that out now? Maybe like this. Oh, come on. Next one, please. Ah, that looks nice. I'm going to switch off the lights so you can see it better. Well, this actually looks quite nice. Let's move around the potentiometer for the blinking frequency. At least if I find a screwdriver that fits. This is the fastest blinking frequency. That's quite nice. Nice little kit. I like this. And for around 5 euro, it is it's quite decent. So maybe you can build one for your beloved one, or give the kit as a present to her, to let her build it up for herself. Wait, we forgot something. We forgot the safety pin of doom. So let's solder this on. Ugh, there are some residues on it. I guess many people must have picked the finger with them. Oh, and by the way, at the instructions manual is a hint that you should hold it with a pair of pliers. You should not hold it with your bare hands. Oh my god, what a nice hint. I would definitely have hold this with my bare hands. A piece of metal I'm going to heat up to 300 and whatever degree Celsius.
because of corrosion it didn't quite hold on to the solder. Maybe with some scrubbing around. Mm, yeah, that worked. That worked out. With a bit of scrubbing it holds on to the solder joint. Let's do the same thing to the other side again. Um, yeah. I guess that is quite nice. Now we can pin this onto our cloth. Nice. Oh no! I didn't switch it off while working on it! The battery could have exploded! We are all going to die!